A Bird of the Bones is essentially a story of redemption for an elderly lady who, on the eve of her 143rd birthday, has a premonition that she has five days left to live. So to begin with the illustrating a premonition, I decided to, to use a bird delivering a letter. So she has a good think about what she's going to do with her last five days, which she has a good rant at the good lord for making her wait. So in the end she decides to dig up her husband's bones and go on a road trip with them to the tree where 120 odd years before he proposed to her. The image of an elderly lady carrying a bag of her husband's bones came from a character from A Hundred Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. So there's a character called Rebecca who, who carries the bones of her parents in a suitcase. And just visually I loved that I wanted to use that in some things. And at the time I was really into Baba Yaga, the Russian folk tale. So I wanted to mix the two together. I had to break down a written text which originally had 23 pages which had two or three sentences on each page and one illustration to one long single time-based drawing. I wanted to break up each day with the ritual of cleaning. So where you see a naked elderly lady, that's the beginning of her last five days. All throughout the image you see a floating sort of chap above the top of the image and you can't quite see who he is or what he is but it's actually her, her husband who's floating along and just to give the idea that spirits are always with us and always helping us. And at one point we see her with a dead bird and that point within the story it's like the, the idea of losing all hope. She really doesn't want to come back, she doesn't want to die, she, she knows the inevitable of what's happening so there's a reference to the labyrinth and, and Greek myths and also Hansen and Gretel with the trail of apples to come back. But within the next scene within the drawing you see her releasing a bird and that's the acceptance of the inevitable. The following morning she's, she's taking water at a well. Which finally she gets to the end of her days, she reaches the tree where she digs a shallow grave on the last day and empties his bones and lays with him one last time where they're reunited up above in heaven and dancing. The character was based upon an elderly lady. She would place a, a shawl around her shoulders, which was every morning, and there was these really tiny, insignificant acts which she would make, which visually and, and sort of aesthetically were really beautiful. But there was a line from an incredible string band song, Mike Heron sings about the beauty in a sad song, which is something which really kicked home with me. So everyone seems to think my work is really miserable, tragic and stuff, but it's a connection that we all have. I think we connect with the sadness more than we connect with happiness. It's like when you're ill, you're brutally ill <laughs> for a while and then all of a sudden you're feeling better again. The better again is just normal, but you remember that illness. It's like sadness, we can remember a time when we were really brutally low more than we're happy when there's a storm or when it's really miserable and there's suddenly a change of light which is incredibly beautiful which you don't get when it's just a blue sky. Sewing helps a, a hell of a lot because it's so slow. It's like going on a big long drive. I always think of when I'm driving to Scotland to visit family and I get over the border and I'm like I'm great I'm in Scotland but then I've got three hours more driving and it's like that I'll draw out the work and I start sewing, I think, yeah, I'm all done to get sewing. It's like another week or two of sewing before it's done. And then half the time I have to wind pick it and, and do bits again. But it, it gives you the space to think. But within that space of time, it's gone like a click of the fingers. It's like two, three hours has just flown by. And it's then you can just carry on. You don't want that feeling to stop. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. So to work on something that takes nine weeks, you go through the emotions of, the, of a story through that time. You go through the frustrations and end with something that you're happy with. The main reason I sew is because is I don't want to be like your typical man. I don't want to be that macho, male, showy-offy bloke and sewing because it's so slow. I can't. The whole process of, of splitting the thread up threading the needle and beginning again and knotting and it's, it's a wonderful beautiful experience.